Now I understand the data I have to work with, and I also understand the criteria I'll use to identify the airports that will be the final solution. The next task is to begin building the model. To begin, I'll open the toolbox by going to the Processing menu, Toolbox. There's a default folder for models, and if models are saved in this folder, they'll show up as models in the toolbox under Models. So I'm going to go into the Processing menu, Options and Configuration. I'll expand Models, and I'm going to click on this folder until I get this ellipsis button. And I'm going to set this default folder to my Lab 5 Data, My Data folder and click OK. Next I'll open the Graphical Modeler. I'll go to Processing, Graphical Modeler. I'm going to expand this to make it big because I'll be working with a pretty big model as I develop this. The Graphical Modeler allows you to create complex models using an intuitive graphic interface. When working with a GIS analysis, most operations are not isolated, but rather they're part of a chain of operations. Using the graphical modeler, that chain of processes can be incorporated into a single process. This allows you to run the entire analysis as a single operation. It also allows you to execute the same model on a different set of inputs, and that becomes very powerful. No matter how many steps and different operations it involves, a model is executed as a single operation, thus saving time and effort, especially for larger models. So the left-hand pane has two tabs inputs, and algorithms. The model itself will be designed in this main window. You'll notice up here it says enter model name here and enter group name here. This is where I'll begin. I'll call my model helipad site selection. And the group name I'll just call after this course, GST102. The group name will be the folder under models where our model appears and helipad site selection will be the name of the model. Next, I'll click Save and save the model. You're noticing that it defaults to the My Data folder where I set the default to, and I'll call this Helipad Site Selection. And you should get the message model is correctly saved. The first analysis step will be to create my study area boundary. This will involve creating a Nueces County shapefile from the USA Wide Counties layer. The first step in creating a model is to define the inputs. So I'll make sure I'm on the Inputs tab here, and I know all of my data is in the Vector Data Model, Points, Lines, and Polygons. So my first input is going to be a vector layer. So I'll double-click the vector layer input, and I'll call this Counties LYR for layer. The LYR will be my naming convention for parameters, which are GIS layers. Other parameters are going to end up being attributes. So this will help me distinguish. The shape type for counties is going to be polygon, and I'm going to leave this at yes, it's a required parameter. And I'll click OK. And my first parameter shows up in my model. And it is a graphical modeler after all, so I can take these shapes and move them around. So as I build my model, I can lay out the flow of the model. One important note here is that by creating this county's layer input, I'm simply defining the conceptual parameter. I won't actually connect this to GIS data until I'm ready to run the model. The next input parameter is going to be a table field. So I'm going to double click on the table field input, call this county name ATTR. Ending the name with ATTR is going to be my naming convention for table field inputs. I only have one layer in the model right now, and that's going to be my the parent layer for this attribute, meaning the attribute is going to be pulled from the county's layer. So I'll click OK, and I'm going to drag this input underneath its parent. So again, I'm going to be, in this first step, extracting Nueces County from the nationwide layer. I've got my nationwide layer here, and I've got the attribute that I will use to do that select operation against. The next step is to add an algorithm to my model. So I'll click on Algorithms, and I'm looking for one called Extract by Attribute. So I'm going to expand the QGIS algorithms, expand Vector Selection Tools, and here's the algorithm I want, extract by attribute. So I'll double click this. And this is a lot like setting up an algorithm that you're going to run in QGIS, a clip or a buffer operation, something like that. Here I'm laying out the parameters, it's just that it won't be run until I run the whole model. So the input layer is going to be the county's layer. 
The selection attribute is going to be the county name ATTR. The comparison is going to be an equals operator, which here is equals equals. The value is going to be New Essex County. And I'll click OK. Now my algorithm gets added to the window. And I can drag this around and you'll see it stays connected to the features. I'll pull it out to the right so we're going to go from left to right as we work our model. So the first complete algorithm has been added. One important note, you'll see there's, a, there's an X. This would be um, to delete this and start over with something else or replace it. And there's also a little pencil for editing this. I can click that and open up this form again and I can make changes. So I can make changes to any of these model parameters at any time. So if I think I've made a mistake, I can go in, adjust it, and click OK. While I have this open again, I also want to point out that there is a slight difference between a graphical modeler tool and a standard toolbox tool. You'll notice the output here. The first time I set this up, I hadn't set this. Here the output can be saved as a temporary file that will be used as input to the next algorithm, or it can be saved as a permanent layer that you'll specify when you run the model. Typing in anything in this space tells the modeler that this output will be saved. The text you supply will be the description for the output when you're executing the model. You'll choose the actual name of the shapefile and its location when you execute the model. Since you may want the Nueces County boundary for cartographic reasons, I'm going to choose to save it here as a layer. So I'll just name this Nueces County. So I've gone in, made a change, I'll click OK. And by typing in that name, you'll see that that produces another output on the graphical modeler, indicating that there will be a layer written out from this algorithm. So now I will go ahead and save the model and close it. Now I'll expand my models over here, and you'll see the GST 102 group is now there, and the helipad site selection model that I just created is sitting there as well. My model obviously is not yet complete, but it's already a geoprocessing tool that I can open, set parameters for, and run. So I'll double click on this, and you'll see that what I've done is basically, by creating this model, created a tool of my own design. So I can tell it the input counties layer is going to be counties. The county attribute name is going to be county. And since I just set this up as a layer that could be saved out, it gives me an option to do so, but I can still just choose to save this as a temporary file. And since my model isn't complete yet, I will choose to just save the output of this operation as a temporary file, but I can run my model and see that the first task is working. So I'll click Run. Okay, so the model ran, and I see my new layer in the table of contents. And I don't see anything on the map, and I'll look at that, and I see that the layer is empty. So something has gone wrong. This is a prime example of how I may have to go in and fix something. So what I'll do now is right click on my model and choose edit model. Open this model back up. I only have one algorithm so that's going to be the issue. I'll click the pencil. And it's probably the selection value. This has to be the same value that the model is going to find in the layer. So I'm going to close the model. I'm going to open up my counties layer. And I'm going to see in this counties field, the, it doesn't say Daniels County, it just says Daniels. So I think, believe that's where my error is. I'm going to open up my model again, go into my extract by attribute, and I, under value here I have Nueces County, whereas it should just be Nueces. I'll click OK, save my model expand models again, expand GST 102, and open up my model. So my counties layer is counties, the county name attribute is county. I'll still save this as a temporary file and click run. Now I see the layer pop up and the model is running correctly. So this is always a good test to make sure things are working well, and if not, it's fairly easy to go back into the model, correct things, and rerun it. In the next task, I'll continue to develop my model.